Hello, I'm Adam, and today I'm really happy to show you a bit of programmatic CAD, that is, doing 3D modeling using a script that generates a 3D model. I'll be using a program called OpenSCAD to produce a design for a hydroponics unit built out of PVC pipe that I'm working on with a friend. What is OpenSCAD? It stands for Open Script Computer Aided Design, CAD. It's an open source program that lets you write scripts and produce 3D models from the code itself. Right here, I created a sphere with a radius of 50 and it generated the model right here. OpenSCAD uses a paradigm known as CSG, which stands for Computational Solid Geometry. And the basics of that are the ability to combine basic primitive shapes like spheres, cylinders, and cubes by unioning, by doing differences, and by doing intersections to build up more complicated shapes. If I want to, say, draw a cube that's translated on the x-axis, I can translate a cube by 50 on X and create a cube that should render on save. But what is CSG? Let me show you. Adjust this cube to be a little bit bigger. Translate it closer in. Nest those inside the difference operation there. Save the file. And you see that there's now a chunk taken out of this sphere. So you can also do union. It'll look exactly the same, but the computer considers that to be a single solid now. You can also do intersection, which gives you the volume that is overlapped by both shapes. So using those things, you can build up pretty complicated models. There's also mathematical capability, for loops, and module loading built into OpenSCAD. If you're interested in it, I recommend checking it out. I'll have a link in the description for OpenSCAD. It's quite nice. One thing I don't love is the syntax of the scripting language. I happen to really love Clojure, and I wondered if there is a way to do 3D modeling using Clojure. With the power of OpenSCAD and a really neat library, it is indeed possible to produce 3D models using Clojure code directly. It's SCAD CLJ by Pharrell M on GitHub. I can tie it in with OpenSCAD directly to make a pretty fun workflow. OpenSCAD lets you open up a file and change the file in a different editor and it will still update the rendered view. So you can use OpenSCAD as a viewer and use Clojure as the code production environment. I've loaded SCAD CLJ into this REPL here already and I have available to me a bunch of different functions. So let's make a sphere in the REPL. It produces is what looks sort of like hiccup. It gives a list with a keyword at the front, arguments in a map. All I have to do to produce OpenSCAD code is use the function write SCAD, pass in the closure forms, and it will compile it to an OpenSCAD string. Now that I can generate SCAD strings, I should be able to spit that into a file, pass this form into the file. Want to reload the file? Yes, I do. And there I see the change right away. I can quickly make code changes and see the changes reflected nearly instantly instantaneously in the viewer here. The only thing left to do is find a way to have the script generate automatically anytime I make a code change. I've already made a little prototype. I have a watcher script and I just run it in my terminal using clj-m hydro watcher. This watcher uses a cool library called hawk.core. All I'm doing with it is setting up a really basic watcher. It looks at this particular file and anytime that file changes, it runs this handler function here, which runs the write SCAD compiler on the design clj forms. Read it in as a string, run load string on the vector of all those forms so that it evaluates everything, run it through the compiler, and I get the out file right away. Since that's already running in a terminal, I should be able to just get going with this directly. I've already stubbed out this whole thing and made a little drawing here about what I'm actually trying to build today. I'm building with a friend a hydroponic unit. If you make a garden outside, plant some seeds in soil, you put nutrients in the soil, and the plant will grow, the root system will grow into the soil. A hydroponic system works exactly the same way except that there's much less or even no soil. You have instead continuous water flow over the root systems of plants you're growing, and there's nutrient mixed into the water. The idea behind this is that it's pretty space efficient and it's pretty easy to manipulate growing variables like heat, humidity, light source, that sort of thing. Here I have the very basic drawing. It's a PVC tube with holes cut in the top, caps cemented onto the sides, and a nice little wood stand. I've stubbed out all of the different components I want to produce. This is the namespace I have. Two utilities here that should help me along. This function place at will take a shape that 
that you give it and a list of points and make copies of that shape at all of those 3D points. And I have a little thing here to make writing pi a little bit easier. The default units for rotations are in radians. So I want to start with the PVC tube. I'm going to create a 2D shape and then extrude it into the third dimension. So handle that by making a function pipe cross section, give it an ID and a thickness. I would prefer to give an OD and a thickness, but PVC pipe in North America at least is referred to with schedule system. So schedule 40 PVC is typical. And what that translates into is a confusing mess, in my opinion. Let's say I want a four inch PVC pipe. What I know is that the inner diameter should be about four inches. And then the schedule corresponds to thickness of the wall. The thickness of the wall is not a constant value. It scales with the size of the pipe. For the sake of getting this design done, I'm not gonna worry about what the actual thickness is. Let's make the outer radius half the ID plus the thickness can make the difference between a circle of outer radius and a circle of inner radius, which will be OR minus T. I should be able to call pipe cross section and it should generate for me. And indeed it does. There are not very many facets there. This is just so that more complicated models render relatively quickly. I can change that using the FN setting. OpenSCAD will render a 2D surface with slight 3D extrusion. That is just a rendering convenience. It is a 2D shape, but I don't need a 2D shape. I need a 3D shape. I'm going to make a function that creates the main tube. Because I already know all of the parameters I want, I'm going to make all of the main part definitions. Take in a single map. I'm going to have two different maps of parameters inside the main parameter map. The tube parameters and basket parameters will both have values that affect the main tube size. The plants get put into little plastic baskets with holes in them so that water can flow nicely and you have some system that you can quickly remove the plants. So that's what I mean by basket parameters here. Pull out the keys from the tube. The length, there's the ID of the tube. There's the thickness, hole spacing. Hole spacing refers to the distance between the hole centers and I want them to be evenly spaced. You want to give enough room for the leaves to grow out a little bit. If you cram everything together, Together, your plants will grow vertically, but they'll grow a little bit weaker because they're all supporting each other instead of holding up their own weight. Number of holes is going to be calculated, so I want it to be parametric. I don't want to have to specify how many holes to put in. All this is doing is taking the total length of the tube minus four inches, which is just an offset based on the caps, dividing it by hole spacing, and then converting it to an integer so that you get the total number of holes that will guaranteed fit inside that length. Then I need hole offset, base the hole from the left side of the tube correctly. That is calculated using this little number here. Hole diameter, I want to calculate based on top radius of the basket. The holes are going to be for loop construction. I'm just producing n x positions for every hole that's there. Build a section of cylinders. First, I'm going to translate it in the x direction by the x value plus the hole offset, 0 and y, id divided by 2. I just want to move it up. A little bit so that it only cuts through one side of the tube. I want to add a little bit of color to it actually. Take the difference of pipe cross section with ID and thickness, extrude linear given height L. That'll be pointed vertically initially so I need to actually rotate it about the Y axis to turn it on its side. Pi times 0 0.5 in Y. Put that together with holes, main tube, We'll make a new section, params. I've got the tube parameters in a nested map, cap parameters, basket parameters, and the stand. I should be able to test my tube function by passing in parameters. There we go. The way that it renders quickly, it can sometimes have weird face rendering issues. All I have to do is run a full render. There we go. You can see it correctly cuts all the holes along the tube. If I change parameters, 34 is the actual design dimension we want, you can see that it automatically adjusts and recalculates the hole position and everything. The beauty of parametric CAD design is as long as you think about the logical approach to how different variables relate to one another and how to calculate positions and size data, if you do that all correctly as you're going, you can control a lot of interdependent changes with just a few top-level global 
couple variables. I'd like to move on to the cap. Cap I'm gonna create by doing a revolve extrude. What you do is you make a 2D drawing and then you just revolve it 360 degrees around an axis and that creates a 3D shape. So it's gonna take an ID, a cap thickness, and a cap height. Use my favorite thread last macro. This shape has six points to it according to my little hand drawing there. And I just pass that to polygon, extrude, rotate. The default is that it revolves 360 so I don't have to pass any parameters in. Right away the difference of that revolve and a cylinder of 0.375 times two of the thickness. And what this is, is a, a center hole cut where we'll be drilling and tapping connector. To add some color to it as well. And obviously before I save this, I have to actually provide <laughs> valid dimensions here. So I'm starting at the zero zero position here, moving to the IR and I'll be moving down here, across, up and back. Run that, we see a cap. The zero 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 origin of this piece is exactly at the center of the inner circle. That makes it pretty easy to translate and rotate it. So it's a smart thing to do when you're designing 3D stuff is to just think about where you want the default origin to be so that you end up doing as few total transformations on the shape as possible. I want to make a stand now. The stand is just made out of a piece of wood with a v-notch cut out of it. Getting the parameters, the width, the height, and the length of the piece, changing its color, and I'm doing a difference of piece of wood with a cube rotated 45 degrees and cut out of the middle. If I run stand, it should compile. Indeed it does. The pipe just rests inside that notch. The basket is another revolve. This is the sketch that I made for it. So it has four very variables here. There's the HR. It's actually supposed to be TR for top radius. BR is bottom radius. Thickness is the thickness of the basket here. And H is the total height. Using that, I was able to produce, yeah, a nice there we go. So that's the basket. What I want to do is create a system that handles the repetition of the stand, the basket, and the cap. Instead of just having one cap, there are actually two caps. So what I want to do is make a function called define caps. I, I want to pass in the parameters to that function directly. And so I can take cap parameters and tube parameters, and then I can destructure in the let statement thickness and height from the cap parameters. Calculate the cap diameter. I can just put together a list of the two caps transform to their proper location. Rotate that one, and this one I have to also do a translate to put it on the other end of the tube. I should just see two caps kind of floating there, uh, two stands. Do the same general logic here. Once again, I can pass in parameters to the stands. The stands showing up there. And the last thing is baskets. Baskets takes in the parameters map. Tube parameters contains the hole spacing, and I need that same hole spacing to place all of the baskets correctly. And I use the place at function to place at point offsets baskets, which have the basket parameters passed in. Here I'm calculating the number of baskets in exactly the same way that I calculated the number of holes. Calculate the offset. Vertical offset is height of the basket in relation to the radius of the tube. That looks more or less correct. Let's make an assembly, and I'd like to pass in parameters map, of course. This time I'm going to get every sub map, alias the whole thing as P. I need to calculate a diameter and a height to approximate the position of the tube in the V of the stands. It's not exact, but it's good enough for my purposes right now. The inner diameter of the tube plus the thickness of the tube times two. Now I want to assemble it, map a translate function, and I want to translate all of the objects except for the stands up by the height. Just outside of that, stands, if all is well. See the whole assembly rendered in one nice shot. I'm extremely proud of this. I'm extremely happy that it works so nicely. That looks pretty accurate to my little sketch. So there's more to add to this model, but I thought that this would be a good slice of what you can actually do with programmatic CAD. Let me demonstrate changing the parameters around a little bit. You get automatic adjustments of positions of everything and the number of baskets when you change the length of the tube. You can adjust the diameter here. You can, let's say you needed to go down to three and a half, you can do that. If you make a pipe that's too small, you get physically impossible shapes. So things do start to go weird if you don't put in hard limits in your functions. To add layers of sophistication to this, you would want to have some kind of constraint engine or something like that, checking that when you change certain variables, dependent variables don't become uh, intractable to solve. So in this case, I just am going to trust myself to remember what 
can and can't change. The last thing I want to show is a way to extend the practicality of this kind of modeling. So Open SCAD program is really popular with 3D printing because it outputs STL files or AMF files. What it does not do is output CAD ready files like step file. If you're not familiar with CAD file types at all, a rough analogy for STL files is that they are like JPEG images. They are lossy in some way. STL files would take a curve and turn it into sets of triangles. You technically lose the exact dimension of whatever curves you had designed. Step files don't have that limitation. They store curves and surface data and all of that. They're a more complicated file type, but they're much more useful for sharing CAD data. What I would love is a way to create step files from this code. And I've hacked together a little utility here using another program called FreeCAD. What this does is it generates a little Python script which invokes FreeCAD. FreeCAD ingests the SCAD file and exports it to step and then deletes temporary files. I'm gonna use CLJ to step pass in the design file here, design.cljc. Let it run for a minute. I'm going to open this design step file here. All right, so that is a 3D step file right there. It even has all of the solids independent, so I can actually work with the step file from this point and add more features if I wanted to from this point on. The nice thing about step files is they're a neutral format. You can open them in pretty much any professional CAD tool. This is proof that my little scripting approach can actually be useful in a professional tool chain. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, that is how I generate 3D models. I hope you've enjoyed this video. A bit of a whirlwind tour of uh, script-based CAD. I will continue to evolve the methodology and the tooling around it. So stay tuned for, I mean, more closure videos in general, more experiments with 3D modeling, engineering type programming videos, all that kind of stuff I've got down the pipeline. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, you know, all the normal stuff that people do on YouTube these days. What would also be really helpful is if you share this around to people who you think might be interested. Closure devs, CAD designers who happen to like programming, anything like that. I would really appreciate all that kind of help. That's all I've got to say. I hope you have a good day. Bye.